What's going on guys? So I was just walking through hard off the other day, as you do, and I came across this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know if it's very special to any of you guys, but I find it quite cool. And what I found here was a 20 gig PS3, a Metal Gear Solid PS3, a silver one, and two white ones. And I've never seen these in person before, and it's quite cool. Um, unfortunately, they didn't all quite fit on my bicycle, so I ended up just grabbing one of them, which you'll see in a minute. That's not going anywhere. Alrighty, now that that's all loaded up, let's get home and take a look. I just got back from Hard Off, the secondhand store. I had to actually ride over to the next city because the local one to me actually closed down, which is a bit sad. And I wasn't going in there intending to buy anything really, just to have a look, something to do, you know? It's a random Thursday afternoon, got nothing else to do. Yeah, I came across all these PS3s and they're exactly the, the models that I was actually interested in getting. There was a silver one, there was a Metal Gear Solid one, and there was also some white ones. But unfortunately those coloured versions aren't the board revision that I actually want in my own personal PS3. If you watched one of my videos from a long time ago, I actually restored a launch model the Australian version of the launch model of the 60 gig PS3, which is like partially backwards compatible. Uh, I've since sold that because it wasn't worth bringing it with me when I moved here, just because Sony is such a big company in Japan. So like, it's it's a bit silly. I did keep all my Xbox stuff because that is a lot harder to find here. I've only come across a handful of Xbox 360s so far, but Sony stuff is like everywhere and it's cheap too. Thinking about getting one of each of the PS3s that I found, but as you can probably tell by this video, I didn't just because one, they didn't fit in the in my bicycle and two, they're not quite the model I'm after. I do want to go back and get one of either the white one or the silver one to gut out and use the housing. But that brings us to the main topic of this video and that is this bad boy right here. This one's a little bit special. This is the 20 gig version. Now, when the PS3 launched, it came out in two different uh, variations. It came out in a 20 gig and a 60 gig. These two models are fully hardware, backwards compatible with PS2 games. Later versions of the 60 gig and depending on which region you're in, like Australia or North America or Europe. I know the European version of the launch 60 gig, I don't think they got the 20 gig. So European includes Australia as well, I believe. Is only software backwards compatible with PS2 games. It's not hardware based like these ones are. North America and Japan got these two versions. Uh, what makes it special about this 20 gig version is it was aimed at being a budget entry level model to the PlayStation 3, because at the time it was quite expensive, but evidently, it did not sell very well. And there's a few reasons for this. One, the price difference wasn't huge. They didn't sell very well. Um, and it's actually missing a bunch of features that the launch model 60 gig version had. Uh, the most notable one is it's not chrome. It's only all black, which actually looks kind of cool. The other main one is it actually has no Wi-Fi and has no card reader. If you're familiar with the launch model PS3s, the 60 gig and well, the only 60 gig really, the 80 gig didn't come out with this, not even the 40. There's actually meant to be a card reader up in here. That's not included on this model, as well as Wi-Fi wasn't included. This is 2006, so it's kind of acceptable almost back then not to include Wi-Fi. The launch model of the Xbox 360 didn't come with Wi-Fi either. And from memory, I think this is only, I think it's BGN. Pretty sure it's BGN, maybe just Draft N at that point. So it won't work on some newer networks now. So it's a bit pointless, like for me, I don't really mind. I'm thinking about making a few different tutorials on this model just because it's a little bit chopped down. I wanna see if we can add some features back to it. Yeah, so this model wasn't around for very long. It originally launched, this is Japan dates, the North American dates are a little bit later than this. Uh, it originally launched in November 11th, 2006. And it was cancelled six months later, or about six months later, in April 11th, 2007. So not even a full year. And there's a lot of speculation of why this happened. The main one is that apparently the hardware cost between this model and the 60 gig version was only like $30 or something. It wasn't huge. You gotta remember that it's basically missing Wi-Fi and the card reader, which is interesting because 
The card reader on the PS3 is Papi USB, I believe, from memory. I actually used to use one as a card reader on my computer because I had a bunch of dead PS3s. I didn't have a card reader for my computer and I used that for years. Actually, some of the earliest videos on this channel, I used a PS3 card reader to get the videos off the camera. Let's just dive into it a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, if it's cut off, but I put this in the basket on my bicycle, it got a bit manged up. I purchased this for 5,500 Japanese yen. So if you're converting 100 yen to a dollar, it's about $55. Um, in US dollars, it's probably worth nothing at the moment because the yen is worthless. In Australian dollars, it's like 58 or something at the moment. The guy in the store was nice enough to let me peek inside it before buying it because most box systems at Hard Off, they seal them. So I'm trying out Multicam for the first time. I don't think I've ever done a Multicam before. And we'll see how this works out. I'm just using the iPhone here. Let's see if I can... Uh, can't really pop it back into ultra wide. What have we got here? We've got a safety information. What's this about? Oh, we PlayStation 3. This is from Hard Off. Oh, uh, I think this is just from the store, maybe, or just a general thing that comes consoles. I can't read it. I'll have to translate it. Probably just something about where to find manuals. Yeah, the original manual, or a little quick reference guide. This is multi language. See, this is interesting. So, this one here, this is for the 60 gig, but we, unless I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure we don't have a card reader on this system. I've never owned a 20 gig one because a 20 gig, I'm pretty sure it did not come out in Australia. I've never come across one before. Here we have a six axis, six axis controller, a genuine one because you can kind of see through it. What's interesting as well, because this one doesn't have Wi-Fi, it came with an ethernet cable. Pretty long one too. Now let's see if we can get this out of the box. That's it. Got some weird residue there. First things first is we check for the warranty seal and it is, looks like a genuine one. It's got, it's silk print, uh, silk screen. So that more than likely the genuine one. The uh, fake copy ones you could get are pretty sure are just like printed and then laminated. Same way to tell. Let's first jump in and before we even turn it on, that's, I don't think this thing's ever been opened. That's a flathead. First things first, let's see what hard drive this has got in it. I don't think this drive's ever been changed because that screw looks brand new until I mangled it. We have, yes, the original hard drive, it's a, a 20 gigger. Uh, yeah, definitely never been removed. It looks like nicotine hybrid, so that'll be interesting to see. I'm kind of hoping that this is like a old enough firmware that it still has the other OS. You can reflash these with a, with a NAND programmer. Uh, these launch ones, I'm pretty sure, are based on NAND. They, Switched over to Norflash on, I want to say the 80 gig, maybe they started moving across to Nor based Flash instead of NAND. Um, but most programmers, I think, I think the E3 Flash supports both. I'm pretty sure. I've only ever used the E3 Flasher like a handful of times on a original 60 gig and I think slim that was about it yeah everything looks in order i also love how the focus i also love how the original ps3 is actually translucent as i alluded to before the um the card reader for this especially i believe it's mostly just the sd side of it is actually just usb so there's an extra usb port part of the usb hub inside here so maybe possibly hopefully we can utilize that for something. It's only USB 2, but get what you can get, really. Also, in the sort of leaked press photos of this thing, uh, it didn't have HDMI originally. So on the original E3 sort of like promo build of this, like, you know, like like what they do with cars, they had the original, the original E3 sort of teaser for the ps3 had two hdmi ports and a weird boomerang controller which they never launched it was just for show really and yeah and the sort of press photos for this that i saw online just now this was completely omitted when they were 
juggling what's the difference between the 20 gig and the 60 gig. Really what ended up happening is this is just a 60 gig that just had some stuff not assembled on it, like the card reader and things. Oh, and the original teaser version had six, not four. Let me pull this apart. I think that's a good idea. No, actually, we'll turn it on first. Alrighty, I got it plugged in now and we can actually do the that up test. I was a bit dumb and I was like, why is there no light on the front? And I was forgetting that it doesn't have a light when it's off. I'm pretty sure it does have a standby light. That's interesting, I can't see one. Anyway, it does turn on. It's been more than five seconds, so it hasn't um, died yet. Another cool thing, and there's no chrome or anything here, which is great. Let's see if there's a disc in it. The console. Ah. It's annoying when Hard Off does that. Any accessories sometimes that come in a console, especially loose ones, they'll part them out, you know, make more money that way. But uh, this bad boy is missing the, the game that comes with it. I don't know if I have any PS3 games with it. I think I have some PS2 games. But yeah, that's starting up fine. Let's throw the controller on. See if they paired the controller. Well, the controller's got battery too. Oh, it works. All right. Let's jump over to the uh, Confuser screen and we'll take a look. See which firmware this is on. Alrighty, so I've got the uh, console booted up now and we're just gonna point the camera at the screen because that's the easiest we can do. I don't have a capture card, I should probably get one. I just changed the language from Japanese to English and it looks like there's some save games on here actually. Also, I'm Keeping getting tripped up by the um, circle and cross buttons because on the Japanese PlayStation, they're reversed. I'm surprised this system still works because this is the original, I think, 90 nanometer processors. And if this is on fairly new firmware, unless the people in the store updated it, but I, I don't think they go to that trouble. They just turn it on and make sure it works. They put a game in unless the game had an update on the disc. But yeah, I'm surprised this thing still works because you've still got the issue with the Tolkien caps on the board and the fact that it is the original die size. A few things I wanna do with this console is one, see if there's any cool mods that we can do to it, like adding back in the card reader or adding in Wi-Fi, things like that. Cause I don't think there's much difference between these two board, board versions. It's like on the PS5 where they had the disc version and non-disc version, they use the same physical board, they're just different um, SKUs, so they're different, pop uh, different components that are populated on them. Have a bit of poke around and see what we can do with this thing. But yeah, I'm surprised it still works. Another thing I wanna to do to this system eventually is do the, the Frankenstein mod to it. I want to be able to use these smaller processors that use less heat and less energy and stuff and they last longer. Apparently that, was actually originally from from Sony. It was like a internal thing and someone discovered it and they reverse engineered it how to replace the processor with the smaller version. I believe it's off a slim or something. The processor comes off a much newer PlayStation that has a smaller nanometer processor and it's just less prone to failure anyway. We're on 4.88 unfortunately, so the system's been fully updated. I don't know what the latest version is. I'm not too up to date on the Sony firmwares because I just haven't had a PS3 in years. I, I own a slim but I have not used the slim in years just been too busy basically but yeah I'd love to dive back into some cool mods on this so let's just dive in now and open this thing up and just have a look inside it's obviously it's never been open before so we might find something interesting Alrighty, so here we go we're gonna break the seal on this bad boy uh, I haven't opened one of these in a while so let's see if I can do it from muscle memory uh, back in the day, I opened up so many of the launch model, uh, the 60 gig. I believe this is basically the same chassis as the original. Like I said, I've never had a 20 gig before, so it's pretty interesting to me. Uh, what we got in here? We've got a Torx, security bit Torx. Yeah, so there's a few different tutorials I want to try and make with this thing. I want to get back into making tutorials. I was thinking like different repair tutorials for this sort of system for the 60 gig. Pretty much the entire fat series and the slim as well. Uh, super slim, I don't think really matters. But doing things like the IHS repasting, so replacing the thermal paste inside the processor. Heat spreader, things like that. How to take that heat spreader off nice and safely. 
there's a few different tools you can use to try and do that. Um, there's some actually off-the-shelf ones that I believe should work pretty well, and I actually have them in my toolbox. So, and they're cheap too. The tools, cheap tools. Um, so yeah, I want to do stuff like that. Maybe do some unbricking tutorials. So I might try and just purposely brick this thing and see if we can unbrick it. As I said before, adding back some of the different features that were removed, so the Wi-Fi and the card reader, or seeing if we can do anything with that um, unused USB port. And I'm also kind of thinking about doing a housing swap on this with one of the newer ones, because again, it doesn't have the card reader or anything. I don't have to worry about that. I really want to have a white one, and the casing for this is very similar to the later uh, white models, or even the silver one. I don't know, it would just be cool to have one. Different kind of just custom looking mods as well. Like I can do like an LCD mod here behind this um, smoke black thing because it's actually transparent. I've done it before. I've done an LED display behind one of those and it looked pretty cool. Didn't really plan this video. I just saw this this morning. I'm like, wow, I'm just gonna get this thing. Haven't messed around with the PlayStation 3 in yonks. Yeah, so maybe leave a comment down below if there's any specific tutorials that you wanna see about um, PS3s in general or about the launch models as well because it's basically a 60 gig, it's the same system basically. So yeah, that's what I'm talking about, how it being translucent, it's so cool. Yeah, I also have another video of restoring a European one or an Australian one, they're basically the same system. Uh, if you're interested in that thought, sort of thing, I'll leave a card up here and a link in the description. What kind of modding things have people been up to lately? Or just repair or electronics in general, like, I'm always curious what other people are up to. Ah, it's all coming back to me now. Eh, people did so many weird mods to these that didn't really help it overheating or anything. Like, much like the 360, it was kind of plagued by the uh, flip chip saga, I guess you can call it, where processors at that time had this issue where the actual solder bumps. So I'll try and put up a, a picture here of a cross section of a PS3 processor. You have the integrated heat spreader, there's thermal paste under that, you've got the actual die and then there's a substrate below that that breaks out all the connections from the die to something that's easy to work with to solder onto a board. Now, the connection between the die and the substrate, so the actual green part of the processor, the, the circuit board part, uses solder bumps, not solder balls, because it's just so small. So what happens is, because there's only a fine connection between the die and the substrate, over time through thermal cycles, it gets small breaks between the die and the substrate. And that's actually what causes most of the issues that both this and the Xbox 360 had, where it would not boot properly, it would have a major hardware fault error. So a yellow light on the PS3 and three rings on the Xbox. And like I alluded to before, Sony apparently, I believe it was Sony that originally did this and then people reverse engineered it. I'll have to Google around. I needed a quick refresher on this before I started. And that is they, on the refurbs of these or the earlier models that had the larger 90 nanometer processors is they actually replaced them the processors themselves with the, with the newer, cooler running, smaller die process, and that made them much more reliable. So it'd be interesting to see if maybe if we're super lucky, if this was a warranty unit, which I don't think it is, it might actually already be Frankensteined. So yeah, I'll have to do some research. I'll pop it up on the screen if I can figure out if it was originally Sony that did this or it's just someone else worked it out, but I'm pretty sure from memory that it was a, a factory thing and then someone discovered it and reverse engineered it. So we don't have any card reader to worry about this time. So with the 60 gig, you're meant to undo the screws and then pop the whole thing off. You can also do it the other way and not take the card reader off with it. So there's our screw. That's still pretty hot. And that's the other thing as well. I have another video that I did where I externalized the power supply from this. This does not look like it's been opened before. Maybe even by a service center. There's no fingerprints on it. Pretty clean on the inside. To before, I mentioned before, there is no Wi-Fi in this unit, but 
like the cost between the two systems, like between the 60 gig, and, I don't know why they did it. It's almost like how they're doing the weird pricing scheme between the new PlayStation 5 Slim and the, the disc version and the non-disc version. It ends up costing a bit more to buy the digital version and then buy the disc drive later. Which, I don't know what the game is there, but maybe it's just logistics, I don't know. Here we're, we're missing the connector for the card reader. And I don't know if you can make this out on the camera. There is a differential pair here. So there's two traces, very symmetrical. Uh, from memory, that's the USB data lines for the card reader. And then we've got some other superfluous stuff as well. Uh, this looks like there'd be an inductor across there, maybe a little fuse there, and then um, all the different voltage supplies because some cards are 1.8 volts, I think, and some are three, I think. Making a tutorial on actually how to diagnose it properly first. So the syscons, the system controller for the, for the console, uh, the data out of this, out of the syscon, and it'll give you an error log of what happened to the system or whatever it's been doing lately. And I believe the entire log has been sort of decoded. So you can work out pretty close to actually what the issue is, especially with these earlier units. It's also crazy our system like this weighs so much. It's like, I took the hard drive out. Yeah, I did. It's like seven kilos or something, six, six and a bit kilos. Yeah, it's not that dirty actually. I was expecting it to be way dirtier than this. Think about making some tutorials, so let me know down below. This thing's in really mint condition for how old it is and all that. So I ended up actually just pulling this board out. Just have a look. I was really curious if this already had the um, 40 nanometer RSX installed in it, but unfortunately it doesn't. This is a does look like a refurbished board though, um, just because it's looks like it's been messed around with but it was still factory sealed and everything. Uh, the main one is uh, the 12 volt connector here is, one, it's like soldered like that, and two, it's like completely loose. I don't know how this was still working. It must have just been the pressure of the case holding it together. But yeah, it's like fully loose from the factory. Um, yeah, There's typical flux everywhere. That's pretty normal for these boards. Um, but yeah, I was just having a quick sticky beak and seeing if there was anything interesting about this. But it is cool that we have four processors on one board. Like I said, I'm not used to this because the Australian ones um, were only partially backwards compatible. They were missing one of the processors. As you can see, looks pretty cool. But yeah, I love these boards. They're so cool. Uh, but yeah, I am planning on eventually being able to swap out the RSX on this with a 40 nanometer one off a slim but I need to get the correct tools for that first namely a infrared um, rework station that can work on a board this big also I want to make some tutorials about replacing these we'll replace them with tokens again but basically I want to make a tutorial on replacing these caps here which can fail they don't Apparently they don't fail as often on these launch models, but on later ones they can. And basically I'd be doing tutorials replacing them with the same component again, not with not with tantalum capacitors like a lot of people do because it's just more hacky way to do it. And look, this is nearly 20 years old and this one still works. So yeah, I think doing it the way it was originally done is a better way to do it. So yeah, back to the video. But yeah, this is the original launch board. So yeah, um, like I said, if you want to see any other tutorials, please let me know. I'm thinking of a few that I want to do. And yeah, I hope this video is interesting. It's a bit rambly and I'm not really doing much, but yeah, just a cool bit of tech. And I love the PS3. It's so nice. I also love the Xbox as well. They're great to work on. PS3, I just, because it's such a, such a, I don't know, 
such a mess basically the, the launch model like it's, it's so much fun to diagnose and fix it and stuff so please let me know down in the comments what videos you'd like to see in the future and my camera battery is going flat so i'll see you in the next one bye